Dude, let's get this conversation going. I've already really started the conversation. Um, Jay, you were at the game on Sunday. You watched some of the games on TV. Give me your take uh, on the whole weekend. Yeah, I mean, so I was only really able to lock into the Sunday game. Um, and that was not the best one. Not the best one. To, <clears throat> not the best one to see. I think uh, Thatcher threw great up until it wasn't great. And then, I, you know, first off, I think that ends up being a huge thing for them because it can't just be great, 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 and then we're out of a ball game because it's not great, right? I think uh, once that kind of happened, like you knew you, you knew what you were going to get with Caglione. You knew he was going to come and be super competitive. I actually, I'm not sure, I haven't been able to watch the rest of the games that he's thrown all year, but what I watched him do when he got behind and counts and how much and how well he used that changeup, if he had been doing that all year, or he continues to do that all year, I think he'll run away with the play of the year. He has not been doing that all year. It's what I thought, right? Yeah. Even by looking at the numbers, you can kind of see it. But if he continues to do that all year, I think he'll run away with the player of the year. Um, I, to me, the problem ends up being when you when you have that one implosion inning that Thatcher's kind of been having right now, I don't think offensively LSU is where they need to be to be able to kind of combat that and to be able to kind of go back against that, especially in this league. And if you keep having that right now, I think that becomes a problem. So I think there's a problem that you need to address. And it's not that they're not good enough. It's not that Thatcher's not good enough. It's maybe some usage is issues right now and where and when and how people will throw. I think you are going to see some changes moving forward starting this week simply because you are in a spot right now. Like, hey, you're two and four right now. And this thing can go off the rail real quick. When you go on the road to Arkansas, and then you welcome in Vanderbilt the next Hey, week. listen to me. Arkansas <clears throat> is a tough environment to play in. Yeah. Especially when they're playing really well and they're playing LSU. They don't they don't really like LSU much, on the, especially on the baseball side. And the woo pig suey thing is a very annoying, especially when you're not winning. Okay? You said you expect to see some changes. What changes do you expect to see? I... I personally expect to see. I thought it was going to happen this week, and then with how much he got up on on Saturday, he was up a couple times in the pen on Saturday, and obviously he came in to replace Thatcher on the Sunday game. Shows me how urgent and how much they want to use him. I expect to see Kate Anderson in the, in the, in the uh, rotation this weekend, and if that happens, I would I would imagine him and Thatcher kind of flip flop roles. And let's be honest, like it is no slight to the man. You just got to know how and when to use him. And what works best for him, right? Like, I think we can all remember back when we couldn't figure out, okay, Zach Hess, how do we use him? And out of the pin was where it was where he was best at, right? I think one of those things with Thatcher is like he may be one of those one of those guys that's like a slow starter. The only thing is, is they don't have a they don't have a time for a slow start this year, right? right. They don't have the lineup for a slow start this year. And I think for him, it may be best for him to find his groove in the pin. Right, and you get like other last guys, year, like just like he did last year. Right, he was able to get going in the pen, and as the year picked up, you saw the best of him. I think that that might be where he be best, might, where he might be best at right now. And if you can use him there, and you can get some more stability in the rotation, you may be able to kind of solve these problems. Because you got to remember, Gage Jump on Saturday, whether or not how much you love his stuff, he's still so young, mm -hmm. and you don't know what you're gonna get. There's not enough background there there's not enough experience there because he was he played very 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 little his freshman year and missed the rest of the year he missed the entire next year and he's back this year right that's a long layoff and not enough experience behind that layoff for you to say i know what i'm getting out of that guy on saturday and he knows where his body is and how to bounce back and how to do this and how to do that he's not actually there yet so you right. have a guy throwing for you on sat on, on friday who's doing the job and he's a good he's good right Still somewhat of a wild card, even though you believe so much in the ability, right? The ability's there. Still believe so much of a wild card on Saturday. And we've been getting wild card starts yeah. out of Thatcher on Sunday. Or pretty much all year for the yeah. most part. And, and look, I, I had mentioned this earlier in the year that it wasn't concerning to me, right? Thatcher's issue last year, a little bit early on, was he would walk guys and then he'd give up a couple hits when he would put them on base and then they would score these big innings, right? Yeah. That was the issue early last year. This year, that really wasn't my concern. I was like, he's not really walking guys. He's around the zone. He's just getting hit. And I was like, that to me, I don't, I don't think that's concerning. I think that he's going to kind of figure it out and he's going to start getting some swings and misses. Well, that hasn't happened yet. And, I mean, he only walked two guys, but he gave up all those runs on Sunday. And it's like, well, 
all right, maybe something's a little off. Maybe he's showing the ball too early. Maybe it's, he's not hiding it. Maybe the mechanics are a little off. I don't know what that issue – I didn't ever pitched, right? I don't know what that issue is or what that fix is, but maybe you're right. Maybe going into the bullpen and saying, hey, look, you're going to throw in high leverage situations for one or two innings, and then you're going to do that and you're just going to start building that confidence again like you did last year, and then we're going to count on you later on in the year. What you or be that midweek starter. You know, be the midweek and then throw in the I, bullpen. I don't the, think, here's the thing. If you put him in midweek, you may yeah, lose him. Yeah, you're right. Right? Like, at the end of the day, you're, right. you're two and four at conference. You put him in the midweek, you may lose him. This is his draft year. Like, let's be – you got to be cognizant of where he is and how he is as a person. I won't say how he is. Where, where anyone would be when it becomes their draft year, whether they want to tell you or not, you throw him in the midweek, you may lose him for the rest of the year. He has to continue throwing on the weekend. I'm just not sure for him and really for the team that in the rotation is the spot. Right. Well, that's where I would say, like you talked about everything that he's done well. It hasn't been really slow starts. It's been the one big inning. And I think putting him in high leverage situations, like out of the pen, may be the opposite of what he needs. Because it might just be. I mean, it's what brought the best out of him last year. Yeah, no, but I'm just saying well, where he is this year. Is... I mean, he was right here last year. Yeah. Even with even worse so if, you think, if you think about last year, right, he had the same kind of thing. Like he couldn't get out of the fourth or whatever inning it was last year. He'd start, start stronger than he couldn't get out of the fourth. Similar Similar situations, but go ahead. Finish what you're saying. Well, no, that's what yeah, that's what just would raise my level of concern for him is if you put him in a spot where that's, there's already runners on and you put him in, then you could. Well, I don't up. think they're going to do that early on. Well, yeah, you just said I just heard high leverage situations, which I think if you do bring him out of the pen, it's almost a clean de facto inning. starter, clean inning. You're coming out in the whatever it is, like the start of an inning where you feel a bit like a starter, as opposed to runners on second and third, one out, like Thatcher go get I, it done. I think Thatcher got to a point last year where the fight or flight was like, hey. It's been bad enough. Can't get any worse. Let's go. And I think when he got to that let's go spot, that's when he went. Get him to that spot again, right? Instead of keep giving him these clean innings and these clean games where he's got to hold on, hold on. He found it last year when he was at rock bottom, right? Rock bottom meant it really couldn't get any worse. Don't matter if it was a clean inning or if I came on with runners on second and third. They wouldn't his runs anyway, right? So I think he's one of those guys to get him going. You may need to put him back in that spot, same mental spot that he was at last year, to really get him kind of pushing along. I just think that the way that it's set up for now, if you do that with kind of where the, the pressure is already and then you start putting him in those situations, people are already kind of taking shots at the bullpen. Who's the guy that you can actually trust? If it works out, that would be perfect. That would fix a lot of things. But if you go to that where Thatcher comes in in a high leverage situation in a close game and one pitch, one swing, and it gives up three and a home run, and you're going, well, why the fuck do you do no, that? No, I understand. That's easy to yeah. say it that way, right? <laughs> I know. Of that's course. what I'm saying. That's the but, short-sighted view of it, but, but that's what people but, are but going to do. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you, when you talk about Thatcher, what are you really wanting out of him? From the be good for a game or for him to figure it out for the long run? Right. So we really don't give a shit if he gives up a three and a home run and we lose one game because we need him to figure it out for the long run. That's really where it's at. And that's how you got to look at it. Like, he's not – if you're looking at Thatcher like it's a one-game fix-it and he's going to be there, you're not looking at it the right way. Right. If you're looking at Thatcher like, hey, we need you to come in and save one game and we, when we haven't even reached May yet, you're not looking at it the right way. You yeah. have to think about him as he is a long-term piece of this team. And if he's not that, then we can't get it done anyway. So it doesn't really matter if he comes in and gives up a three-run homer next weekend. Who cares? And, and look, this weekend really wasn't on the bullpen. You know what I mean? Like, I, I wouldn't blame it on the bullpen. No, Obviously. Not at all. Obviously, on Friday, you threw two guys. You had um, Luke Holman threw lights out, and then Griffin Herring finished the game. Griffin, yeah, so you had two guys, and they're both lights out. The next day, you had Gage Jump go five and two thirds, strike out eight. He walked four, which isn't great, but he got himself out of trouble. Only gave up two hits. Had one inning, base loaded, no run. I mean, no outs, gave up two runs. That was a great, great escape job that he did. Five and two thirds, eight punchies. And you put in Ackenhausen, who threw well, right? Now, he gave up the two-run homer. Did Gidry. I mean, Gidry. Gidry got out, did his deal, got, I think, one or two outs. Uh, I think two outs. No, he went, uh, I would did say, uh, one and two-thirds. Was it? Oh, oh, yeah, right. You're right. You're right. You're right. One and two-thirds. And then you put in Ackenhausen, who threw really well, and he just kept going. They got an extra innings. Now, I know he gave up the base hit to score the run, right, to tie the game. He also had the one where... Malazzo blocked it, which I'm not even putting on Malazzo. Malazzo would sit here right now and tell you, I've got to make that play. That can't happen. And that's what you would expect him to say because he's a competitor and he's really good. Ball bounced. He blocked it. It kicked right. He had no idea where it went. The guy gets the first and the guy scores. Very fluky thing. Unfortunate. 
Next guy punches out. So now it's 5-4 going into the ninth. Or, uh, that tied it. No, that did not tie it. The tie, base hit, single in the ninth, tied it. That was in the eighth. They were down two. So it was 4-2. to two. That one made it 4-3. to three. Top of the ninth, I think there's one or I think there's two outs. And mm-hmm. the guy, I think it was Shell Nut or whoever it was, line drive up the middle to tie the game off of Ackenhausen. But then he gets out of the rest of the ninth, then he throws the 10th, and he gets the 11th. And they threw or they pitched the Caglione really well that whole game. The first game, too. They pitched, they pitched them really well the first game. They pitched them really well the second game. And then you get up, made one mistake, pitch up and out, and he got to it and hit the ball like shot of a rocket ship and hit a two-run homer. And that's the danger of a guy like Jack Caglione, right? You can do it. You can be perfect 99% of the time, and then that one mistake – it came in the big moment of the game. I'm, I'm not blaming on the bullpen. That is a tough guy to face. But all in all, in those first two games, the bullpen threw fine. The pitching staff was fine. The big issue on the second game was LSU had 10 hits going into the, after the sixth inning, and they didn't get any more the rest of the game. And so the Florida bullpen was the one who kind of hunkered down and figured it out and allowed them to chip away, chip away, chip away. And I think that you look back, and I think everybody on the team would be like, damn, that was a game we probably should have won. That was a great game. But you'd imagine that they probably they, – they would imagine they, they should have won that game. And then you get to Sunday, and LSU's up one nothing. Then they go down 2-1. Then they go down 6-1. to Then it's 6-2. to And then the just kind of – wheels kind of fall off and 12-2 to and 10 on roll for the second straight, which that's concerning to me. But that's – I think that goes to the conversation that we just had before where, okay, we're not going to be the team that's going to score 10 runs right now. Not right now. Not right now. And I'm not saying they can't. Listen, Jared Jones looks great. I mean, he's at 10 home runs right now. He's got three or four home runs in SEC play. Mm-hmm. He hit a ball 110 off the bat, opposite field to the back of the wall. And then he hit a ball to the old Alex Box Stadium mm-hmm. in the next game. So he's swinging the really good bat, really hot bat. Pearson looks pretty good. Mm-hmm. You got guys doing some things. You just got to figure out how to consistently get on base and drive these guys in when they're on base. Right now, they're getting the big hits with nobody on, and they're not driving guys in and scoring, hitting with guys in scoring position. And that's just part of baseball. Sometimes it's hard to do it. That's when pitchers understand, hey, I got to get a little nastier. I got to, I got to lock it in. Um, but that's also where you make your money. Yeah, and look, I get it. Like Jay's got a ton of options if you will this year and that's that's all great I I do think there is something about and whether he would admit it or not like it is what it is but I do think there's something about you said who's swinging great right now Jared Jones right I'd give it to Tommy I mean Tommy's Tommy right uh Travinsky's probably you know doing what you would expect Travinsky to do right right Pearson okay who's getting on in front of them yeah, that's the problem. Okay. Yeah. Who's 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 turning it over at the bottom of it? That's the problem. Yeah, and that's my point. I, I don't think and I we knew this. Like they were young, they were gonna have some guys that had to come along. And I'm not saying they needed to be at the spot where they came along already in week two of the SEC slate. But if they're not along, then we gotta be able to pitch it better and stay in games longer. And that's where we haven't really done it on the SEC part of the schedule. So to me, that's where it needs to be figured out at and needs to be figured out now, now because going into the SEC schedule, they were, I think as a team, a sub two. So when we get to the SEC schedule, that can't disappear while we're trying to let these bats and these younger hitters and these guys with less experience kind of mature a little bit. And that's, that's the part where you got to be patient, right? And it's, it's hard, not, hard to be patient because you're two and four in conference, right? Now you mentioned – a couple guys that you may you may so there's some changes in the in the in the rotation pitching staff, but you think there could be some changes in the lineup relatively soon. Yeah, I, I think uh, I mean we've seen it before, man. Like when young kids kind of get a chance to hit and they come in and do some things and they they kind of impress, but they're still not in the lineup. And then a game kind of game like that in conference play kind of gets out of hand, 
and you see young guys like Larson get in there and still get at-bats late in the game, well, he ain't giving them at-bats because he just wants to get these other guys out who are either not doing good and or had a great game. He's giving them at-bats because he's like, well, let me see with this guy because he might actually strike a, like spark something yeah. in, this, in this club. I would imagine he's not for, if things keep going how they're going, from finding himself inserted into a lineup and getting a chance to be an everyday guy. Here's... And I didn't expect to say this this year. I thought it was gonna you're gonna need a few of them to. Whoa! Put that back range up there. the fours. No doubt. Uh, I I I thought you were gonna need a couple of the young guys to like <clears throat> fill in and be part of that lineup, and because you, you need to develop that. I think it's you're gonna be counting on more got more young guys than you think, right? Like you're already counting on Milam. Right, he's their starting second baseman, and he's starting to kind of get through the SEC play and understand. Okay, SEC is a little different animal. He's going to adjust. I have no doubt of that about that. He's going to adjust. He's going to start putting together, stringing together some really good games. But you're going to have to start counting on guys like Larson. You're going to have to start counting on guys like Ethan Fry, who has been here for a year. Right, guys who haven't been in the lineup right away. Those are the guys that you're going to start having to rely on. Right, I know Jake Brown has gotten some moments. Now he got pulled uh, early in the Saturday game. Uh, I don't know. Did Jay address any of that? I don't even know. No, but I think you can make the inference for what happened. I think it was a didn't hustle out a double play when it felt like he thought there was two outs because he kind of was, I don't want to say jogging down the line, but he wasn't busting it as if he knew there was, if he beats it out to first with the speed that he has, that it would have kept the inning alive. So I'd imagine that's a freshman making a bit of a freshman mistake. And see you. Yeah, well, and that's and that's learning. That's a learning mm-hmm. situation. I, I would honestly argue this: as much as you could use like the infusion of some of these young guys, kind of getting it going, right, and coming on a little bit. I also think like if I'm if I'm going to sit here and think about let's let's just go with Dylan Cruz, freshman year Dylan Cruz. As good as he as good of a year, freshman All American. Did you look at it as Dylan Cruz had to be the driving force of this team for that team to be successful? Did you look at it that way? No, no, because that's so rare in this league that that needs to be the thing. What needs to happen is you got to get some real consistency out of Bingham. What needs to happen is you got to get some real consistency out of Kling. And those guys got to be mixed into it. If you're asking them right. to drive the top and to turn it over and to be the driving forces of those spots, this team's going to struggle. Mm-hmm. You need those guys to kind of start playing because that's how these young kids can kind of mix in and for better, for, for lack of a better word, kind of hide. Right. Like, think about it, bro. Even your freshman year, as good of a freshman year as you had, you wasn't expected to come up and be the offense that day. You wasn't expected to be the fire starter and or we need you to turn it around and get it back. Mix in. And that's kind of what happens as a young kid. Right. And to that point. Right. I guess when I'm saying they need to step up, they don't need to be the guy. Mm -hmm. But when some of these young guys start to have some success and start to get on base and start to. Hey, we start to have a little fun. You start to see everybody kind of join in on that, the, especially the young guys. Then the veterans like, oh, okay, I gotta pick my shit up because if I'm not careful, I'm not gonna have yeah. a spot. I'm gonna be sitting on the bench, right? And so maybe turns up the competitiveness just a little bit. I'm not saying that they are not competitive and they're not being competitive and they're trying to fail. That's not what I'm saying. Sometimes when somebody else does something and you kind of realize, like you said, fight or flight type of situation. Uh, it, it helps them pick their game up. But something needs to change offensively because it feels like they start getting rolling for a couple innings and then a few in, then, then after two or three, four innings, it just kind of gets a little stagnant, which that's part of baseball that happens. Like, they, we've, we've talked about this. They have to continue to just push forward and find their way. At the end of the day, all of these things said, they are two and four in conference. They're still ranked in the top 15 or whatever they're going to be ranked. Top 10. I don't know what they're ranked yet. Eight. Eight. Okay. We're still ranked in the top 10. Okay. You lose to Florida at home. They would say, I would say they probably should have won that series. They should have won Friday and Saturday. They didn't. They should have. They lose on the road to Mississippi State. Mississippi State beat them. They, they just flat out beat them. I can't say they should have beat Mississippi State at all. They won the game. They should have won. That was it. Yeah. You go on the road next to South to uh, Arkansas. Arkansas is five and one. They're beatable. Arkansas doesn't score a ton of runs, right? Like 
What Arkansas is really good at is pitching. Their pitching staff and their rotation is arguably the best in the SEC, if not one of the best in the country. That's a challenge, right? That is going to put the offense in a position where, like, all right, we're going to have to figure something out. And sometimes that's what you need. Yeah. Hey, listen, y'all are we're struggling. We ain't scoring runs. You're going to face these guys who's probably going to go top five overall, maybe one overall pick in the draft if it wasn't for Caglione or Condon or whoever. But this guy is throwing 96 to 98 miles an hour from the left side, and he's going to come right at you. Yeah. And he's going to try to embarrass you because he struck out 17 guys in, in six innings. Or what was it? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 17 guys in six innings. He's going to try to embarrass you at home. So sometimes it's like, hey, all right, we're going to pick our shit up and we're going to score some runs. Now, on the other end, this gives the pitching staff, hey, we're going to go out there and we are going to carry this team against an offense who, yeah, they can score. They're not known for their offense this year, but they have the ability to score some runs and they have the ability to put pressure on you and they're going to play really good baseball. Like they're gonna steal bases, they're gonna take the extra bag, they're gonna hit what runs the scoring position, but it put it makes it puts the pitching staff in a position where like, all right, we're gonna be the guys, and we're gonna go out there and we're gonna dominate this game, and you know, Arkansas is not unbeatable, no. but it's a tough challenge on the road at Arkansas, it's a tough place to play. So those are your first three series. Let's just say you go there and, and you don't win the series. Let's say you go one and two. All right, now you're three and six mm-hmm. in conference. Still not the end of the day. Still not the end of the world, right? You're not the season's not over with. Then you start figuring out. You got a team struggling in Vandy, and you go for it's, it's too early to start looking at the whole schedule. But my point in saying this is, you have two good series, and you start figuring yourself out. It's not over. It's not like you're zero and six, where you have this huge uphill battle to climb. Um, they have talent, and they're very good. They're very talented. Jay Johnson's a very good coach. You have leadership on this team. You just have to have it. You just have to have it gel, and that's just they haven't gotten there. Sometimes it takes longer than others. Ole Miss didn't gel until the end of the year two years ago. You know what I mean? Like, just never know when it's going to happen. They have the ability to make it happen. They have the guys on the team to make it happen. I have full faith in this team right now. It doesn't look great. Doesn't mean it's going to be like that. 